I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let a record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It's 6 o'clock. Would you please join me as Mr. Sanders leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Bush in the Pledges of Allegiance? If you would, you know, we've had a lot of turmoil in our world recently. We've had police shootings and we've had victims of violence. And so as I was reflecting on what I might do today in our invocation, I thought about just reading a poem or something, something that I, I read recently about our lives and what they really mean. And then I'd like to follow it up with a prayer to our nation that was written by Dr. Billy Graham. It says, I read of a person who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. They referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. They noted first came the date of their birth and spoke the following dates with tears, but then said what matters most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth, and now only those who love them know what uh, their little, that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters most is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. There are, things you, are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we just slow down to consider what's true and right and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved them more. If we treat each other with respect and more often we wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? If you would join me. Our Father and our God, we praise you for your goodness to our nation, giving us blessings far beyond what we deserve. Yet we know all this is not right with America. We deeply need a moral and spiritual renewal to help us meet the many problems we face. Convict us of our sin. Help us to turn to you in repentance and in faith. Set our feet on the path of your righteousness and peace. We pray today for our nation's leaders. We, get, we ask that you give them the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do it. You have said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. May this be a new era for America as we humble ourselves and acknowledge you alone as our Savior and Lord. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Texas Pledge? On honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Sanders and Mrs. Bush. <coughs> Welcome to each one of you tonight to uh, July's uh, regular scheduled board meeting. Glad that you're here. Go to item 2A, special district recognition, district support staff ambassador awards. Dr. Stockton. We are going to recognize some very special people tonight, and I'm going to ask Dr. Hines to come up and introduce them. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Tonight, it is my privilege to present to the Board of Trustees for special recognition the Ambassador Award recipients from various support departments that are housed in the administration complex. We want to thank you for honoring these team members who exemplify excellence and exceptional service in their daily duties in support of student learning. These outstanding staff members are evidence of why <coughs> CISD is a great place to work. And we also want to thank Tonight, all the team members, family members, friends that have also come out in support um, of our six honorees for this evening. So at this point, I'd like to start with presenting them. Uh, first, from the Curriculum and Instruction Department, we have Cheryl Ward. Cheryl will come on up and ask for some <laughs> Cheryl. 
Cheryl Ward has been with the Conroe Independent School District since 2003. She has served as a library assistant, campus secretary at Vogel Intermediate, secretary to the director of elementary education, and currently serves as the secretary to the assistant superintendent for elementary education. Mrs. Ward is resourceful, professional, and a team player. Perhaps one of her most notable characteristics is her kindness. Whenever or wherever there is a need, she is willing to go the extra mile for the success of our district. For her support of our campuses and the positive impact on the families of Conroe Independent School District, we present Mrs. Cheryl Ward as our Curriculum and Instruction Ambassador Award winner. Next, from the Communications Department, we'd like to recognize Doug Woods. Doug will come on up. Doug is, a, is the Senior Press Operator for the Conroe Independent School District Printing Services Department. As a Senior Press Operator, he is responsible for single color, spot color, and all process color printing produced by printing services. Process color printing is a challenging art that Doug has mastered during his 29 plus years of offset printing experience. His detail-oriented approach to each project centers on completing work on schedule and turning out a top quality printed product. Additional talents Doug brings to the department include his mechanical skills. He attends to the general maintenance on, of the presses and troubleshoots and makes repairs to other printing services machinery, saving service calls and extending the life of our department's equipment. Doug is a valued member of the printing services team and is now beginning his 10th year of sharing his talents with the Conroe Independent School District. <laughs> this evening from the finance department, we'd like to recognize Mary Head. Mary has been an asset in various positions during her 17 years with the Conroe Independent School District. Prior to joining the payroll department where she has worked as a specialist for the past 10 years, Mary worked at Giesinger and in accounts payable. Mary works closely with TRS reporting, which is our retirement system, uh, and salaries. She is being recognized for her strong work ethic and dependability over the past several years. She is also known for her honesty and her other personal qualities include being patient and empathetic in her interactions with district employees. The finance department is proud to present Mary for this deserving recognition. And tonight from the special education department, we'd like to recognize Elizabeth Rao. Elizabeth has served as Special Education Department Secretary for the past 10 years and is a tremendous asset to the Special Education Department. She has 20 years of service to CISD and prior to joining the district special education team, Elizabeth served at Hauser, Creighton, Grangerland, and Moorhead. Among her many outstanding qualities, she exhibits strong work ethic and knowledge of her job. She is dependable, always pleasant, and helps everyone within their department and that is why we are recognizing her this evening. From the technology department tonight, we'd like to recognize Andrew Nelson. Technology would like to recognize Andy for special recognition because he has continu continuously exhibited excellent customer service skills while helping teachers and front office staff with technology related issues. Furthermore, he routinely looks for ways to expand his technical knowledge and expertise above and beyond that which would be required to meet his job responsibilities. It has become routine to receive unsolicited positive feedback from the staff at his assigned campuses in regards to how Andy goes the extra mile to make sure their issues are fully resolved. Going on only his third year in the district, Andy has proven to be an invaluable member of our team and has a bright future with our district. The technology department is excited to present Andy Nelson for recognition. <laughs> and last but not least, from, uh, from my department, 
we want to recognize tonight, Peggy Blake. Peggy has been my assistant. Yeah. Peggy has been my assistant for the past 13 years. Bless her heart. We've had a good run together. We've worked <laughs> with, uh, with every department and on a variety of projects in the district. Uh, she has 23 years of service to, in the Conroe Independent School District. And prior to joining my office in 2003 as secretary to the assistant superintendent of secondary education, Peggy worked with social studies and the student parent programs. And before that, she served as secretary at Milam Elementary. She is kind, she has a calming voice, she is helpful, she is positive, she is confidential, she is reliable, and always professional. And Peggy will be retiring at the end of the month, and I will miss her a great deal. Uh, she has supported me, and we've shared a lot of adventures, and uh, she's deserving of your recognition. On behalf of the board, for all the re recipients today, uh, on behalf of the board and Dr. Stockton, we want to say thank you very much uh, for everything that you guys do. So we've got 60 campuses and counting, and 57,000 students and counting, and over 7,000 employees. Everywhere that we go, uh, we are fortunate that people are patting us on the back, recognizing Conroe ISD as a fantastic school district and a great place to work, live, and play. And this, uh, uh, this community appreciates everything that you do, but more importantly, the leadership of the uh, Conroe ISD has recognized you guys as making those things possible. So we don't underscore that at all. We want to make sure that, that you understand how appreciative we appreciate you and how much we know that you work as hard as you do. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> if y'all want to stay and hear all the budget numbers, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, good night. Can we get an award for that, too? <laughs> <laughs> Item 2 of uh, the CISD Education Foundation Report, Dr. Stock. We are honored tonight to have Melda Blair here to present the update on the CISD Education Foundation. Thank you very much, Dr. Stockton, board. We're thrilled to be here for our once a year report. The Conroe ISD Education Foundation, although you will not find it in your budget because it depends on no tax dollars and no school district dollars, is, does have a mission that is specifically and solely to support Conroe ISD. So we report to you uh, how we're doing in that respect and I'm proud to say that we're doing an amazing job. That foundation is uh, growing and every year we have more scholarships and more support for the for the district itself so uh, I am the chairman and president of the Education Foundation and with me tonight is one of our board members mr. Jim Blair he's waving and although I usually give you a report once a year this year it's going to be given by our executive director Maris Blair Good evening. It's a pleasure to be able to present this report. I did lay your report on, uh, on your desk, along with a little thank you prize from us. But I wanted to report on scholarships, the main thing. On your report, we have a student scholarships. This year, we handed out 17 scholarship awards. And that's a really big deal, you know, going to these kids at $1,000 a piece. There is one scholarship that is $1,800 a piece. 
Later on in your report, I did list every student's name and what scholarship they did receive. Uh, one thing I do want to say was this year, the Student Selection Committee was just truly impressed by the applicants. They were just wonderful. And I must say, they were very grateful. I received so many emails saying, thank you. I'm blessed. So it was really great to see. So we had 17 students this year. Overall, we have awarded 135 student scholarships to your graduating seniors. That's really, really big. The educator scholarship has been taking off over the past couple years. Total, since the start, 287 educator scholarships have been awarded. This year alone, 68 of your uh, educators received scholarships of $1,000 a piece. Um, I just can't tell you, you know, that we had 40, then 50, and then now we have 68. Uh, later on in your packet, I listed out every educator in the school, but they really reached out to the foundation because they want to improve. They want to get their master's and their doctorate or their principal certification. So that says a lot about your educators. Um, and then we have some new scholarships that came out this year. The All Means All scholarships, you might have heard of this through Sam Cable. 14 All Means All scholarships were awarded to freshman students attending Conroe High School this year. Each scholarship will consist of $2,000 by the time they graduate. So they have to graduate, they stay within Conroe ISD, and then this money accumulates, we administer it, and then it goes towards their education when they go on to the university. So each year, there are going to be some nominated freshmen, and we will just keep track of them. And then hopefully, you know, in four years, we can report how many stayed with the program and what, you know, how many continued. And another very special one that started this year is the Paraprofessional Scholarship. This is brand new. It's for uh, bilingual and special education only. What occurred, Dr. Stockton, when his father passed away, he asked for donations to be made. So we made the Earl Stockton Memorial Scholarship Fund. So we're sitting there and Dr. Stockton goes, I have an idea. How about paraprofessionals? We're like, okay. So it worked out really well. I worked with the HR department very closely, and we had six bilingual and special education instruction, uh, instructional uh, recipients this year. This is a chance for them to go on to even get their bachelors. Uh, so th it was very exciting. We had uh, over 10, almost 15, I think, apply first year. And this is kind of neat because this scholarship enables us to create new teachers from the district em current employees, somebody who's already loyal to the district. They can stay in it. In it uh, exceed. Then every year we get many phone calls on our welcome back. These are for teachers uh, who are newly signed on that were Connor ISD graduates. This year we gave a hundred cards. Wow. That's how many graduates from Connor ISD are now back teaching for y'all. You know it's kind of neat to kind of see and I want to go back and eventually line up the names with also maybe recipients because they're going to come. They're coming back. They like to work with Connor ISD. And then the Educator Mentos, that's a little present I left for y'all. This year, we gave out a magnetic dry erase board. It's just something to say thank you for your time, what you do for the district. And we try to think of something fun. So I wanted to bring that for you. Uh, and what makes this work every year of the scholarships is the breakfast, our one time a year fundraiser. And it's because of y'all that this is successful. Uh, this year, I'm just so excited to report we roast over $200,000. That's a record. Plus, for y'all who attended, y'all know it was a sold out crowd. I, Nell and I were running everywhere trying to place people. It was just sold out. And every year it gets bigger and bigger. And just word of mouth from y'all really, really helps. You know, come support the community. And apparently it's working. And right now, balance held in CDs, we have over 600,000 with over 100,000 held in operation account after the scholarship disbursements. So as Nell mentioned earlier, we're doing very well financially. We have money to give to your educa educators and your students. So, you know, bring them on, you know, tell them to apply. Uh, I know um, everybody's doing a fantastic job in administration, emailing everybody and the students and the counselors. If it wasn't for your counselors, high school counselors, this wouldn't be successful. So thank you to them. On the next page, page three, this is your breakdown of each student. They deserve the kudos, so I wanted to be sure to include their names, which scholarship they have. And you can also tell by the scholarships how many people have set up memorial scholarships every year for these students. And you'll see these names over and over and over again. 
and without them, we couldn't do this. This is a very, very generous offer. Uh, page four, I started bringing in the all means all students <clears throat> recipients. These are the 14 seniors, I mean freshmen, sorry, at Conroe High School, that hopefully when they re repeat with seniors, they will get some uh, scholarship funds to go to the university. Page five, these are our brand new six para paraprofessional scholarship recipients. Uh, they are extremely grateful. I think this is just going to be fantastic because in a couple of years they're going to be teachers and they can, you know, just succeed and keep on going. Some of them have even mentioned that they've heard about the scholarship program after they get their bachelor's. So some of these people are looking for masters and doctors. I mean, they really want to accomplish. Uh, then here are, the, here are your 60, um, 66 educator scholarship recipients. These people are just outstanding. I wish you could see all the applications. Some of them are just, you know, fabulous of what they want to do, how they want to take what they learn from their um, higher education back to the classroom or back to their skill as an educator with the district. So it's, it's, it's fun to go through each application every year. And of course, sometimes you have to cry a little bit because, you know, they're just too good. And the last page is to me one of the most important. These are the main sponsors of the breakfast. Um, if it wasn't for our sponsors, you know, we wouldn't be up here presenting such a great report about your students and your educators and what we can do. And I do want to recognize uh, Ian Powell is here this evening with PBK. Year after year, uh, Ian Powell with PBK has made our breakfast successful. What can we do? You know, we're there for you. You just tell us what we need to do. So a big kudos to PBK. And again, I just want to thank you for the time. I love presenting this report because it just makes me, you know, all happy because you've got a great district. You've got great educators and great students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for all you do. Any questions? I think she pretty much covered it, she but did. just in case. Great job. Very thorough job. Great job. You know, it takes a village and, and it takes people's commitment like y'all's to the to the foundation, uh, all of y'all. And and I mean your your board members and I know they act like staff members, especially at that breakfast day. So I, I know uh, uh, it wouldn't be where it is if it wouldn't wouldn't be for your your commitment to that. And so I, I appreciate it sincerely. Thank you. I'd also like to point out that uh, there's uh, I think there's a couple of other sponsors in the room we thank each and every one of you uh, uh, I know Danny's here and, and so on and so yes. forth so yes. no, nobody left out we thank each and every person that has anything to do with it and most especially you and, and Maris we, we know you do all the work so we, we, we're pretty <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the front page, by the way, on the left does list the board of directors, and uh, they are all very dedicated. So, again, thank you, and thank you for all that you do as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item uh, 2C, citizen participation. Do we have somebody signed up? Uh, yes, sir. We have Penny Binbo. Okay. Uh, the next 30 minutes have been designated for uh, public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designated to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may take may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. And thank you for calling the first person. Please go ahead. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Penny Bimbo. As I said, I live in Bender Slaning, and I'm part of the Spring Creek Coalition, which is a 15 homeowners association strong organization. Um, and a little bit off topic, I just want to thank, thank the Blairs. Everywhere I go in Montgomery County, I see your hand in contributing and giving back to the community, and I really have a lot of respect for that, and thank you guys so much. Um, I would like to formally and respectfully ask the board uh, and Superintendent Don Stockton and President Husbands to please place on your agenda next month in August a discussion about the Waterbend Cove 
road being utilized as a main entrance for the new high school in Bender's Landing. Our communities, all of them, strongly oppose this plan. Our community roads are, roads are very narrow and were never designed for high volume traffic. Waterman Cove is already jam-packed and congested during school hours with the three schools we're already handling, that being Snyder Elementary, Cox Intermediate, and York Junior High School. Multiple homes also have their driveways facing that road. They will not be able to get in and out of their driveways in an in a, uh, expedient way. Our community is a very quiet and very reputable community. Adding this amount of traffic will negatively impact our property values. Our community will not stand by and allow this to happen without giving it a fight. Most importantly are our children. Waterman Cove is the only, the only street our children have to walk to and from school. We have no sidewalk on that street. I challenge you to please go take a look. There's no sidewalk. The children walk in the street every day. Adding the additional traffic from that road will cause a child to be put in harm's way. There's no question about it. The young ch kids have no other recourse. This will increase their risk of getting hit by a vehicle. This is something that we take extremely seriously. This is an a extreme safety hazard and our community is very, very concerned. What we would really like is just an opportunity to come next month and voice all of our concerns to you in a respectful manner. And hopefully you'll hear and understand and maybe that will have some weight in your decisions to do this. We do recognize there are alternative uh, routes, the Grand Parkway, which is a high volume uh, road and uh, the feeders to that handle high volumes of traffic and are more than adequate to take the loads. Also, there's other opportunities and roads that are being built. Um, so please, we, we ask that this be put on the agenda so we can further discuss it. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, item three, uh, consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items if that's uh, still the case. I would entertain a motion in a second. <coughs> Mr. President, I move we approve the uh, consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. I have a motion. Second. And I have a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 4A, uh, elementary and uh, secondary summer school, Dr. Stockton. Okay, this time I'll ask Mr. Caker and Dr. Phillips to come up and present the information on our summer school program. Hey, good evening. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Um, Jim and I really appreciate the opportunity to present a summary of what's been going on this summer. A, a lot of people think of summer as a as a, a time of idleness, but not in Conroe ISD. There's a lot going on. Um, I'm going to be discussing and sharing with you the elementary uh, side of what's been happening this summer, and um, Mr. Caker is going to talk about secondary. So first off, um, we did have seven different programs that were going on this summer. Um, but I first of all have to uh, introduce to you the amazing assistant principals that took this on. Every year we, we scour the district for the brightest and the best to um, take on this challenge. And so many of them are here tonight. So if I call your name, if you'll just stand up and wave and let them know who you are. But Crystal Poncho. Crystal is there you are. Crystal <laughs> is um, typically at Snyder Elementary. And so she served at Armstrong this year. Um, David, Na David Kite. I can't see with this post, John. So. <laughs> David is one of our special ed lead teachers and worked with our ESY program at Armstrong. Thank you so much. Um, Tra uh, Tracy Somerville could not be with us, but she is at Wilkinson. Uh, Kristen Belcher from Hauser Elementary was at Hauser this summer, so thank you. <laughs> uh, Sunny Nolan is from uh, Tuff, and Sunny served over at Houston. Thank you so much. Um, Teresa Waller could not be with us, but she's from Grangerland, and she served over at the uh, Milam campus. Kristen McWilliams um, from Reeves Elementary, uh, was served at Reeves Elementary. Um, Linda Breschler, 
It's from Grangerland. Thank you so much. And she uh, was at the Grangerland campus as well. And then uh, Robbie Cantu could not join us, but he was at Travis. So without these uh, people, we would not have been able to pull it off. They're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd like to just take a minute and um, talk through the seven programs that we had. The, the biggest program was our Passport to Learning, and this is a program that uh, targets students that are, attend Title I campuses for students in kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, we, they work on reading, writing, math, and science. It's a half-day program. Um, and we also, if there are students that uh, need some, some intervention that do not attend a Title campus, we also allow tuition-based as well. So you can see we had 1,039 students from Title I schools, and we had 62 students that elected the tuition-based program for a total of uh, 1,100 kids. Big, big program. Very important program. Our bilingual program is also very large. Uh, this summer program is mandated by um, the federal by federal law to be uh, provided for pre-K and kindergarten students. However, um, in Conroe, we're so fortunate that we extend this opportunity to first and second grade students in the bilingual program as well. So these are for students that um, are in the bilingual program that speak Spanish as their first language, and the goal of the program is to enhance their skills in English. It's a full day program. English as a second language is also offered. Uh, this is, again, um, required by federal law for students in pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. Um, again, we extend it to first and second grade students, and these are for children who may speak a language other than Spanish or whose families have elected to not attend the bilingual program, and we had 222 students in that program. Reading and Math Camp is a very intensive, targeted program for fifth graders. Um, these are students who have failed the STAR test in fifth grade um, the first and second time. Uh, we had 369 students that um, participated. Um, and I think most of you are aware that the state eliminated that third uh, assessment. So um, we were very happy that the kids kept coming back to school even though they knew the test wasn't going to be there. Uh, they found value in the program and we really feel like we gave them that next boost for sixth grade. So we we're a uh, great program. Um, not only do we meet academic needs, but we also have some opportunities for enrichment. So uh, our Kid, Qu Kid Quest enrichment program, we offered three different courses. One of them is a robotics course, which we have done in the past. It really helps prepare kids or excite them about First Lego League. Um, and then we had two new courses that we've never done before, um, Kids News and Kids Voice. Kids News was aimed at kids who are into videotography, photography, um, taught them how to splice film and edit and all that. The Kids Voice program, were, um, it, it was targeted for kids that are creative, are writers, are actors. And so we put the two programs together and the culminating activity was the Kids News and Kids Voice all produced a news show. So we had the videographer side of the kids um, editing and, and putting that together, and then we had the creative side of the kids that wrote the scripts and, and acted in the, in the newscast. So it was really very, very successful. That's also a tuition-based program. Can I program. just a minute, please? Yes, please. Where, where did that idea come from? And, and how many districts, other districts, are offering that? As far as the videotography and specifically the, that they worked with um, Chris Rygout, our GT specialist, our GT coordinator. So she's she worked with the teachers, and they came up with that. Isn't that phenomenal? phenomenally? Creative. Yeah, and I will get you the link to the to the um, program. It's pretty cool. Sorry to interrupt. That, that is okay. That's, that's, that's great. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, they were. It, it was very exciting. We had sixty five students that participated in that. Okay, and then we also offer extended school year services. Um, these are, uh, this is a, a program for children with disabilities that have demonstrated that they would have severe regression if we didn't continue their services through the summer. So we had uh, 35 elementary students that participated in that, and um, that's still going on right now, still happening. Okay, so we'll just kind of recap on the, the funding. The great majority of the elementary uh, summer programs are funded through um, state and federal sources. So you can see there that uh, Title I, oh, half a million dollars from Title I. Title III, we have $246,000 um, LEP state reimbursements. So about $928,000 comes um, through uh, state and uh, federal fu funding. Local sources, $170,000 from bilingual, our local bilingual sources, and then special education education kicks in about 35,000. Um, and then our, our tuition revenues were 25,660. So uh, total cost for the summer was $1.1 $1, $1 million. 
And so for elementary, to recap, we had almost 4,000 students that were served in elementary summer programs this year. Nine different schools, uh, 235 teachers participated, 37 uh, paraprofessionals, and then our fantastic nine um, administrators pulled it all off. It was a big, big, big feat. So I'll turn it over to my partner. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Uh, President Husbands, members of the boards, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure now to share information about the secondary uh, program with you. Um, we are uh, very proud of uh, the work we did this summer. I have some of the administrators with us here tonight. Wes Henson could not join us, who has been at Conroe High School and doing high school summer school for uh, quite a few years and does an outstanding job with a very big program. Um, we do uh, have Brian Lee, who was our summer school principal at Knox. Um, we also have Sean Allman, who was summer school principal at Pete. And we have Demetra Phipps, who was a summer school principal at Washington. Um, we want to thank them for everything that they did this summer. <laughs> Outstanding job. Also have uh, Crystal Coleman, who was our summer school ESY principal at Pete, and uh, Robert Jackson from Moorhead, um, who were summer school principals for us. So um, in uh, programs this year, um, these are programs that we've traditionally offered. Uh, once again, we had high school initial credit courses, high school credit recovery. Uh, we have an online program for um, math credit through our grad point. Um, we have junior high credit recovery um, in a STAR Academy, and then we have high school and junior high uh, ESL academies, at a GED program, and then our extended school year program like um, they offer at the elementary level for our special needs students. Um, first time credit recovery or credit offerings this year um, were seventh grade math, uh, eighth grade pre-algebra, algebra one, and pre-AP. Uh, geometry, all of which uh, serve to help our students accelerate their math uh, curriculum uh, and opportunities uh, as they progress toward high school. And then in terms of initial credit, you can see we have uh, a healthy list of offerings. And all of those serve to help our students as they pursue credit uh, for high school diplomas and uh, have the opportunity to expand their elective opportunities as they're able to accomplish some of these courses that we can offer through summer school. So um, it's, it's a great opportunity for our students that uh, many take advantage of. Uh, in terms of the financial summary for uh, our summer school program, you can see we too uh, use state and federal sources to fund our programs with <clears throat> Title III uh, monies, uh, local sources, and then the tuition-based component uh, of our summer school program uh, where we actually collect tuition uh, this year in the amount of $280,000 uh, roughly uh, for a total expenditure of $411,000. And um, we do uh, intentionally budget for the summer school program. So things like transportation that are part of this are all incorporated in these. And we haven't broken those out specifically, but um, you know, it's, it's as, um, we look at summer school, it's a big enterprise, and it's a, a, a it's like opening and closing a school system in a matter of months, but it takes much work behind the scenes to make that happen. Uh, in summary, uh, you can see we offered um, over 2,267 uh, enrollment opportunities for school students in the secondary program. Uh, we served 781 students at the uh, high school level, uh, 102 students in our online academy, uh, 456 students uh, in the junior high summer school program, 50 students in, uh, were part of the ESY program, 27 students in the GED program, uh, 85 students in the ESL Academy um, and approximately 95 percent of the high school courses taken were completed successfully. Uh, 285 initial high school credits were earned by high school uh, students and junior high students and uh, 351.5 repeat credits were earned by high school students. Uh, this is uh, very big because um, this is one of those contributing factors to pre preventing dropouts and keeping our graduation rate high and keeping kids in their graduation cohort as they prepare uh, to go 
through high school and graduate with their class in many cases. Um, you can see that um, we had a very successful summer. We served over 1,500 students in five locations. Uh, we had 72 teachers, 26 paraprofessionals, four counselors, five nurses, three instructional coaches, four testing coordinators, and six administrators. So all in all, um, with both programs combined, we served 5,400 students in 14 locations. Again, um, equivalent of a, a lot of school districts, bigger than a lot of school districts in the state of Texas. And we did that in you know, two months' time. And it can't be done without the help of everybody in CISD, from transportation to uh, human resources to curriculum and instruction. Um, you know, everybody plays a big role in this to make it work, and certainly none of this would be possible without your support. So we thank you for that and uh, are uh, appreciative of all the work that uh, everybody did this summer as part of our summer school program, but especially our summer school administrators because they are boots on the ground working with the kids and making a difference every day. So uh, any questions? Uh, well, I've seen, you know, Mr. Lee, make a big impact on junior high kids just personally. And I was curious, is, does the program continue to grow in junior high? Well, I see junior high as such a critical age and you know, such a, a big age of influence. And I just kind of want a little feedback on, you know, is it growing? And, and you know, what do y'all see in the difference in the kids in junior high and this participation? Anybody? <laughs> my, my kids were outstanding. <clears throat> I think I say on behalf of the entire board that you guys, when everybody else is kind of taking a break in the summer, you guys, uh, we're very appreciative of what y'all have done. And this is just amazing, the number of uh, kids that you've impacted and what you've done in the summer. And while a lot of us are taking vacations and all you guys are, as you say, boots on the ground. So we appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Item 5A, naming process for new CISD campuses. Dr. Scott. All right, I'm going to invite uh, Curtis Null to come up and introduce that item. Well, good evening, President Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. This is an exciting time for us as we uh, look at our first new campuses uh, with our bond issue and we prepare for their opening in the coming years. Um, we've seen pictures of these campuses developing over the last few months with Mr. Foster shares with us and um, the first step in, in, in our side, the school side, is to establish a name for these buildings moving forward. And so tonight uh, we will start the process of naming our new high school and also Flex 17. And just to try to remi remind everybody and orient everyone as to the campuses that we're talking about, if you look at the, um, the picture on the screen there, that diagonal line going across is the Grand Parkway. And the schools that we're, we're speaking of tonight are the new high school that you can see directly there on the Grand Parkway. And then uh, just to the north and west, uh, you'll see Flex 17. That is uh, located kind of right behind that Creekside development there and near Burnham Woods and Kaufman Elementary. And uh, just, for, just to note here, you also see Flex 18, which is not a school that we're in the process of naming at this time, but it will be this time next year, we'll be back having that conversation. But uh, just to note, so that you can see that once these three schools are built, it's kind of how all of our schools will fit in that area together. Um, it's, it's certainly uh, densely populated and therefore our schools are uh, somewhat close together as well. Uh, as we begin this process, so tonight is, is uh, how, we, how we kick this off. And just to share with you a timeline, over the next month or so, we will be uh, asking the public to offer us suggestions for names of these two facilities. Um, we will collect those names and, and get them 
packaged up so that we can come back to you in August and share with you what the community has shared with us. And we will provide that to you as an information item in August. And then at the September board meeting uh, would be an opportunity to have this be an, an item on your agenda for your consideration to choose the names uh, of these two facilities. And just to, to remind everyone that, that may have ideas for names of these schools of uh, our policy uh, CW local, it says that high schools in Conroe ISD uh, shall be named after geographic areas. So that's the criteria that is included in board policy for high schools. And then for uh, elementaries and junior highs, so for Flex 17 here as an elementary school, it may be named after a geographical area. A prominent person or public official who has served the district or community with distinction, uh, persons who have gained recognition in education or the arts, uh, national or state heroes whose names lend prestige and status to an institution of learning and whose lives and achievements will serve as a positive role model for the students at that school. Uh, or it could be named after a person donating land or money for the facility. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's the breakdown of, of uh, how we would, would name the schools. Now, uh, how will the public then bring to us their suggestions? And uh, I will tell you that uh, Ms. Wood and our communications department has done a fine job, and I just want to share it with you live here tonight so you can see it because it is already out there and live, and I bet we already have a few uh, suggestions that have come our way, if I had to guess. So if you, if you go to our website. Do you, do you uh, track the suggestions or that's kind of just not track them in the sense that <laughs> you post them I mean, in, yes, in the sense that you post them rather than <laughs> tracking behind the scenes. Yeah, so we will be able, uh, the form that they fill out, we'll be able to export it into an Excel file, yes. and then right we'll now. compile that for you so that you will, you know, it, it will be uh, easy for you to manage when you see it. We'll, we'll, we'll package it up. Uh, if someone was to go to our website, just the, the main Conroe ISD website, you can see here uh, the logo at the beginning, and then as soon as you scroll down, it's the first thing uh, here that the that our citizens could come to uh, about naming schools. And if they hit learn more, uh, you will see the great web page that uh, our communications department has created. Uh, goes I gonna, through. I was going to say that. It really looks it's a unbelievable. lot better. Right. Yes. Unbelievable. And, Absolutely amazing. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. So it, it'll share with everyone the timeline. Um, the policy is there if they'd like to read the policy. Um, Let's just say that someone had a, an idea that they wanted to share for the new elementary. They would click here, and you will see that these things will pop up. Um, a place for them to share their name reminds them of uh, the, what the policy is and, and what, you know, so that people would be reminded by that. Like that. And they can share their idea, and then there is a box there that we've limited the number of characters. <laughs> that they can say why uh, their idea uh, should be considered. And so when we have all of these together, that we'll be able to share that with you in, a, in an Excel format. And the, the high school uh, page looks the same, so it's really well done. I think it should be um, very easy for the public to navigate and, uh, and, and be able to share their ideas. We will be sharing um, with the community that this is available. We, we want it to seek their input. And so uh, Ms. Wood will be having a press release to go out. Hopefully that uh, all our local media outlets would publicize this for the community. We'll ask our principals to share this as they are putting out their back to school newsletters just to let the parents know throughout the district, not just in this area, but throughout the district that this is going on so that the people will know that they can go in and, and make their suggestions. And uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of ideas. I look forward to seeing uh, those ideas that are out there. Uh, I think it's an exciting time, especially in the name of high school. It's, you know, we don't, we don't do that very often. And so uh, it is an exciting time. Um, any questions or, or suggestions of the, of the process here? Like I said, I think Ms. Wood has really knocked it out of the park on the website. Very nice job. Very, very nice. beautiful. Yep. Very good. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. No? All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 5B. Or approval of the guaranteed maximum price of rent for the Woodlands College Park High School Robotics Editions and authorize the superintendent to execute the contract. Dr. Stein. All right, I'll invite Easy Foster up to present this item. President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval a guaranteed maximum price amendment for the Woodlands College Park High School Robotics Editions 
We're requesting your approval of the GMP and the authorization for Dr. Stockton to execute the contract documents. If you'll recall, on March 22nd, you selected Ellisor Constructors to be our district's construction manager at risk for the Woodlands College Park High School Robotics Additions Project. Since then, we've advertised taking bids and Ellisor prepared a proposal for this work. The district has negotiated a guaranteed maximum price of the project of $4,147,420. I'd like to point out that the work is mainly for the robotics addition at College Park, but we are also addressing some needs for the ROTC program uh, included in this contract. Sorry, at this time, uh, we're requesting your approval, and we'd like to note that the contract documents are being prepared by our outside counsel. We have a motion. Motion. Thank you. And a second? A second. And any questions or discussion? No, sir. No. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much, Mr. Foster. Yep. Item 5C, capital improvements update. Dr. Stop. Mr. Foster, please. Mm -hmm. All right, this time I'd like to give you an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start you with the Woodlands High School, where we're working on the girls' locker room facilities. The, uh, the addition portion of this project is complete, uh, so you're looking at the, uh, a nice, pretty exterior view of that addition. The interior work uh, at the beginning of this month moved into the existing facility uh, that's been there for a while. So the, the facility has been uh, freshened up and remodeled. Uh, the locker bases are in. The lockers themselves will arrive later this week. The floors start going down this week, and it'll be ready for the girls when they come back the first part of August. Awesome. At the new high school, uh, you can see the site from this view doesn't appear to be changing much. Uh, we'll get a little bit closer. You can see the the building actually taking its shape. The concrete foundations are essentially done. The grade beams and slab are what's in progress now. This project is on schedule. The steel actually begins showing up next month. So uh, with a little bit of luck, uh, we'll be showing you some pictures of vertical construction over the next next board meeting or two. Again, this project is on schedule, scheduled for opening in 2018. Wonderful. Our 2016 li campus life cycle project, a uh, major portion of the work is Runyon Elementary where we're doing a system to overhaul in this building. Uh, the project is on schedule. The air conditioning system has been removed and reinstalled at this point. Uh, the, the air is running inside the building and they're in the process of putting it back together uh, now. Uh, we've updated some of the, the marker boards and projection systems as part of this project in this campus as well. And that pro all that is progressing as scheduled. Uh, it, will, it will be ready for school uh, when school resumes in, in August. Uh, another portion of that project is the re-roofing of Caney Creek High School. The uh, major portions of the, the uh, color change are in place. Now we're beginning to, to start the, the, the deep, uh, deep color that points out the uh, front doors of the building. And we're also beginning to work on the, the flat roof sections of that building. It is also on schedule uh, as planned. And it, it does not affect the opening of school uh, in August. Uh, last month we reported the, the new turf at Wood Forest Stadium was completed, and it, it remains completed. But uh, there's other work going on at the stadium now in the upgrading the sound systems and, and maintenance on the, uh, the bleacher stands, handrails, things of that nature. That, all that work is in progress and should be completed early in August. Moving on to our CTE and robotics project at Cane Creek High School and Oak Ridge ninth grade. At Cane Creek High School, we're working on cosmetology, welding, construction, and robotics. These labs uh, are on schedule. They'll be ready for when school starts in August. Uh, the pictures all look like this, which is where we expect this project to be at this point. Uh, uh, these pictures are about a week and a half old, so things are going back in. So when we come back next month, uh, they should be finished products. Again, this is just another one of those lab spaces at Cannon Creek High School. At Oak Ridge ninth grade, it's a welding lab, and the pictures are in the same state. This is exactly where we expect it to be at this stage of the job. It, it will be ready for school when it resumes in August. Moving on to our safety and security project, this is where we're actually, over the next uh, two or three years, affecting every campus in the district. Uh, this summer, uh, a lot of the scope of work is creating a secure reception area uh, for some, many of our campuses. Uh, we've done 16 of those locations, and they're, they're on schedule. Uh, we're putting uh, the, the storefronts, the glass, the doors, the hardware, things of that nature in now. The other portion of this work, which is not really visible, are the security cameras. 
the improvements to the intrusion detection systems, the, the door contact sensors, things of that nature, all that work is progressing as we planned. At Grangerland Intermediate, where we're adding some classrooms to that campus to increase its capacity, uh, the work on the exterior of the building for the new uh, the fire lane access or fire loop access that's required by the county is in place. They're in the process of cleaning that site up and getting it ready and presentable for the start of school. Uh, we have installed the building slab, and uh, like I reported at our high school, the structural steel shows up in the next week or so. So the uh, the erection, the the big equipment that's needed to stand the steel vertically, uh, should be on and off the site before the students come back. Uh, in August. At our new elementary school, flex number 17, uh, just like our high school, it's, you can start to see it develop on the site. Our grade beams, our foundations, our building slab are going in. And just like the high school, the structural steel begins to show up over the next several weeks. So with a little bit of uh, a luck and some good delivery schedules, we'll show you some vertical pictures uh, at our next update. And that is what we have so far. Excellent job. Mr. Foster, a quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, summertime work, taking the new schools out of it. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, just the summertime work, uh, update projects, whatever. How much construction are you doing this in the, in the two and a half months you have in summer? Uh, and Doc, some of it started before, but some I mean, of it basically. Uh, we did a, a quick count. We, we are uh, attacking 58 individual projects on 52 locations uh, over the summer between June 4th and August 8th. Uh, rough dollar volume is somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 million. Uh, it's it, it spread out across several different contractors, several different contracts, and spans the school year, so it's hard to put a, a hard estimate. But we've run our billings through our finance department this year, this summer. By the time we process the August billings, we should be right at 20, 21 million. And just, just so everybody puts in perspective, that's knocking on the door the cost of a flex school. Yes, sir. Okay, and you're doing it in two and a half months. And I understand that construction doesn't work that way. Right. Please believe me. But I am saying it's awesome that you can touch 52 campuses, and I, I lost the numbers somewhere there, but uh, and do $20 million worth of work in the summer. Keep it all on schedule and guarantee my kids will be back in school. Well, it, I love it. it. I guarantee you it's, it is a team effort, just like our summer school programs. Uh, we reach out to our maintenance department often to help. Our finance department is... Uh, uh, we, we are working together because uh, I, I cause them a lot of grief. Architects, uh, architects, <laughs> contractors, architects, contractors, everybody, you know, administration, everybody needs to be commended and uh, just wanted to do that. Thank you. Appreciate I, it. I just want it noted, Mr. Rice nodded very, very vigorously at that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Item 6A. Uh, uh, preliminary 2016-17 budget, budget presentation, Dr. Scott. Speaking of Mr. Rice, I'll ask him to <laughs> come up and present the preliminary budget presentation. I'll go as far to say as uh, to say that I'm sure most any school district in the state would be proud to present this preliminary budget. So excited to have that presentation. Hey, good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to present the preliminary 2016-2017 budget. First, I would like to give out some thanks, and I'd like to start with Dr. Hines, Dr. Knoll, Mr. Caker, and Dr. Phillips. Their leadership and guidance through this process is, you can't quantify it, so we thank you all for that. And then I would also like to introduce our finance office staff that is here this evening, uh, Cindy Westra. Janice Stowers and Karen Garza, very instrumental in the preparation of our budget. I always like to start out our budget presentations with our financial highlights. And just to highlight a few of these, uh, you know, one we always like to point out is the district voters approved our 2015 bond referendum. Uh, the district continues to get recognized from the state comptroller's office for our transparency presentations. We receive transparency stars from the comptroller's office for traditional finance presentation, debt obligations, and contracts and procurement. We were the first district in the state to receive stars on our debt obligations and our contracts and procurement presentations. Can I, can I stop for just a minute? Yes, sir. Yes. You are the first district to get it, but if I understand correctly, first state agency. you're the only district to get it. Correct. And to top that off, you're the only government entity in the state of Texas to get it. 
That is correct. And ladies and gentlemen, that needs to be commended. We sit here and hear about y'all's awesome work day in and day out. We were talking about this earlier. And and it's just, oh, that's great. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Good job. But I'm telling you, we are the only district and the only government entity to get the debt started. Is that correct? And the and the mm -hmm. uh, contracts, contracts and procurement. procurement. Sorry, I'm sorry. I got yes. half the story straight. Dr. Stockton, would you would you mm -hmm. straighten the story up for well, everybody? Yeah, I, want to, uh, I want it known. <laughs> well, you you were very close to getting a star in, in introducing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no cigar. Yeah. You know, we're we're very proud, and, and it's exciting that our our we're excited about it. We were the first ISD to get a star, and then we were the first. Uh, governmental entity to get a second star. In fact, we're the only governmental entity to get the second star and third star. So, and that's in the entire state of Texas. And when you're talking about ISDs alone, you're talking about 1,150 school districts. So, we're very, very pleased with that. We we made a commitment tr to transparency years ago, and we take it very seriously. We know you do, but uh, we do get lulled into a sense of this board, and you know our our parents, and and they just, I mean. You know, I, I'm, I'm not an Allstate agent, but the good hands people, <laughs> and, and, and we need to recognize, and the community needs to recognize, and I'm going to see that it's done in the newspaper, <laughs> that, that this district is outstanding. It is, what did Marcus Luttrell say last night, and I'm not playing politics, this district's the light. Okay, I mean it is number one, and I thank you, Dr. Stockton. I thank each and every one of you, and I'm going to stand for you. Would you join me? <laughs> okay, I interrupted enough. Well, well, I would just like to point out on that note that Miss Garza that we introduced before. She's in charge of our website and getting our transparency stars and getting the information together and putting it out there. And then Mr. Rick Reeves with purchasing got our, our contracts and obligations uh, star for that. So awesome those job. should be created. Awesome. He's the one that's really frustrated with Easy. Huh? Yeah, he really is. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Easy are good. <laughs> okay, moving forward, uh, we also received our bond rating upgrades from both Moody's and Standard & Poor's to help us on our interest rates. Significantly helps us on right? Significantly, yes. yes. Okay. Talk about saving the taxpayers' money. That's it. That's a good one. Uh, Texas Smart Schools, uh, formerly known as the FAST Report or the Financial Allocation Study of Texas, it highlights success in two dimensions academic progress and cost effective finances. And Conroe ISD is one of three districts that have received five stars, which is the highest rating you can have for six consecutive years. Our 2015 ERG report. Uh, ERG stands for Education Resource Group, and they perform an analysis of the 200 largest districts, and ranking is done also on academic and financial performance. And the goal here is to be in the 1 1 box. And if you see on the graph up there in the top right hand corner, that red dot, that's Conroe ISD, and we are in the 1 1 box. And we're currently ranked six in their program. And you can see the list of districts on the right, uh, those are the districts that are in the 1 1 box also. Now we'll look at the major components that actually drive our budget, and we will begin with our 2016-2017 budget objectives, and they are to meet the needs for the 2016-2017 school year. We want to provide a competitive raise for all and additional salary adjustments for identified areas. We want to prepare for the upcoming legislative session and possible future budget reductions. And then if funds are available, utilize budget surplus to support capital pro projects and reduce bond debt requirements. Our 2015-2016 tax rate comparison, our current tax rate at $1.28 is 48 cents lower than our tax rate was in 0506 when it was $1.76. We're currently 19 cents below our peer average tax rate, and we're 13 cents below the closest district to us, which is Klein. And we did a poll of our districts for their 16-17 tax rates. Everybody's remaining the same the same except for Klein, they're increasing by two cents. So that 13 cent number is going to go to 15 cents. So we're looking good. A general fund balance. This chart represents the fund balance of the general fund over the past 10 years. 
In 2006, our fund balance was right around $60 million. In 2015, we ended at $121 million. And during this uh, time, the board transferred excess fund balance from the general fund to capital projects, avoiding new debt. The, trans the transferred amounts are identified in the red blocks by year that those funds were transferred. And if you look at the green shaded uh, blocks at, on 2015, that just identifies the $33 million that we've designated to assist our 2015 bond referendum. Our fund balance analysis, our 2015-16 budget was $416.6 million. And once again, our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 16 to 24 percent of the annual budget, which gives, which gives us two to three months of expenses. 16 percent of the budget is 66.7 million. 24 percent of the budget is 100 million dollars. Our projected unassigned fund balance at 831.16 is roughly 151.1 million dollars. 115.1 million. Mm -hmm. Try to get that extra 50 in there. Just uh, 28 percent of the, uh, which is 28 percent of the budget, and 15.1 million dollars over our high-end target. Our enrollment trend. Uh, this chart here just shows an enrollment trend over the last nine years plus uh, this year's estimate. In 0708, we had 46,524 students. We're using for 2016-17 uh, an estimate of 59,639 kids, and that is an average growth of 1,548 kids per year. And I would just like to point out, uh, if you look at that graph, it's it's pretty straight. You don't see any peaks and valleys. It's a steady 1,540 kids a year. So. So that trend is very telling. Our attendance data, our state revenue estimates and campus expenditure budget allocations rely on our enrollment data. For the upcoming 2016-2017 budget, we're using an enrollment increase of 1,400 students for a total enrollment of 59,639 students. Just would like to point out on the budget side, we budget on the expenditure side on enrollment. However, our funding from the state comes on our average daily attendance. So uh, having those kids in school not only helps them with their education, but it also helps us with their funding. Uh, this year we were able to increase our percent of enrollment for our ADA calculation from 93.5% we used pre previously to 94%. And if you look at the trend in 2007, our percent of enrollment was about 92%. Uh, we ended last year at 94.69%. So. So they have done a lot of a lot of great work, Dr. Hines, Dr. Noel, and their staff. <clears throat> well, and, and where, where the bulk of that comes from is um, the, the classroom teacher who's encouraging the students to be there and making le learning a great you know a, the classroom a great place to be, um, and, the, and the assistant principals we had and counselors um, communicating with parents. We made a big effort in that, and it's really paid off for us. And our CISD police force does a great job in supporting them. I have a question. I yes, sir. may not be able to answer it. I'm just curious, but the, the enrollment going up, do we, do we know that if that is uh, younger kids getting older and now are in kindergarten moving on, or is it broken down to people that are moving in into the middle ages? Or I'm just curious if it's an aging community or if it's... Uh, if it's a uh, Dr. Hines, it's, it's still a growing community. I'm sure it's, you, you I'm look sure it's at our, a combination of everything. Our first grade enrollment is larger than our, our 12th grade enrollment. Mm -hmm. And that's that's true district wide. Sure. It may not be true on some campuses, mm -hmm. um, depending on the age of the community, but we're still a growing district in that sense. And we're still, we still have bigger groups entering in kindergarten. So we also we can get some movements sure. in other grades. So kindergarten is not. Right. Thank you. Good question. Okay. Our certified property values this year we're using an estimated 10% growth in our assessed value. Uh, this growth will add about three billion dollars to our property values, bringing our total value to 32.8 billion dollars. Uh, we should have certified values in on July 25th. I have been working very closely with the appraisal district, and we're right about that 10% mark. So there's still $3 billion worth of properties in ARV, ARB right now. So that might come down a little bit, but we're sitting right at that 10% growth. So now that we've discussed the major components that drive the, the budget, we will look at how they 
actually affect the budget itself, <laughs> starting with our 2016-2017 funding estimate. Our tax revenue increase based on our estimated 10% AV growth will increase by $31 million. Our state revenue, due to the Robin Hood effect, based on our 10.8% AV, AV growth in 2015-2016, will decrease by $28.3 million. However, we will have an out offset based on our 1,400 new students coming in of $10 million, giving us a net state revenue decrease of $18.3 million. We still have available surplus from the 2015-2016 budget of $19.8 million, giving us a total estimated available funding of $32.5 million. Uh, this is a net revenue increase of $12.7 million. <clears throat> Our approved 2016-2017 teacher hiring schedule, it includes a raise of $1,650 with targeted equity adjustments for teachers with seven plus years of service. Our beginning teacher salary will be $51,000. $500. Our 2016-2017 salary increase, it includes a 3% general pay increase at a cost of $9.2 million. The adjustments to the teachers with seven plus years is $1.5 million. Our police and auxiliary pay adjustments, $404,000. Our increased stipends in the bilingual special ed and fine arts programs, $408,000 and other market adjustments, $206,000 for a total salary increase of $11,766,316. So this is the personnel for growth. Now these personnel are added to support our 1,400 new students that are coming in. They include 93 and a half new teachers. We have 18 special ed positions. We have 10 and a half paraprofessionals. We have four administrators for a total of 128 new positions at a cost of $7,015,000. Uh, for our support positions, we're adding 26 positions at a cost of $1,155,000. Our total payroll additions are equal to $8,170,000. And our other expense detail, uh, we have an increase in our appraisal district fees of $500,000. Supply increase at the campus to support our 1,400 new students, $150,000. Uh, we were able to uh, have fuel savings due to the price of diesel coming down in transportation, so we're saving $750,000 in, in, in there. Uh, support for our career and technology education program, uh, $1.9 million. Uh, an increase for AP textbooks at the secondary level, $100,000. And insurance and other, $212,000. $420 for total other expense increase of $2,184,513. So now looking at the projected expenditure budget increase for 2016-2017. That includes our salary increase plus our targeted adjustments, $11.8 million. Additional personnel, $8.2 million. Health insurance, this is the board increasing the contribution from $428 per employee per month to $440 per employee per month at a cost of $750,000. And then our other expenses, $2.2 million for a total projected expenditure budget increase of $22,870,829. So now looking at the 16-17 projected budget. On the revenue side, we had our 15-16 revenue budget, $443.7 million. We had a net increase of $12.7 million, giving us a projected 1617 revenue budget of $456.4 million. On the expenditure side, our 1516 expenditure budget, $423.9 million. Uh, we had increases of $22.9 million, giving us a projected 1617 expenditure budget of $446.8 million. This is leaving us with a projected surplus of $9.6 million. Right. Yes, sir. The addition of fifteen million in cushion buffer that you had earlier. What do we? Where are we earmarking that for? What, what's the plan there? Oh, we were. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it might be one or two slides, but 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 we have recommendations for that okay. surplus. Uh, it'll be the next slide after this one, I think. So our 2016-2017 proposed budget summary. Uh, this pie, pie chart shows the breakdown by major object. And that includes uh, payroll and benefits is 89% of our budget. 
Uh, contracted services, 5.2% of our budget. The largest item there is utilities. Uh, supplies and materials, 4.33% of our budget. The largest item in there is fuel. Um, equipment and other is 1.4% of our budget. The largest item in there is insurance. So that is that by major object. Our 2016-2017 proposed tax rate, we're requesting no change to our tax rate. Rate would like to remain at $1.28. Uh, that is a dollar four for a no and 24 cents at debt for debt service. So our fund balance analysis, our proposed 2016-2017 budget is $446.8 million. Once again, our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 16 to 24% of the annual budget, which is approximately two to three months of expenses. 16% of the budget is $71.5 million. 24% of the budget is 107.2. Our estimated unassigned fund balance at 831.17 is $124.9 million. That is 28% of the budget and $17.7 .7 million over our high end target. So I think it's very important for us to do a pro forma where we think we're going to be. Uh, you know, the next year doing some forecasting. So 2017-2018 uh, beginning revenue $456.4 million. We're, we're, in, we're estimating a total revenue decrease of $5.1 million. The majority of that is based off of we're using 6% growth in our AV value versus 10% this year. Um, that will give us total revenue of $451.3 million. Our, our Projected beginning expenditures, $446.8 million. We have estimated expenditure increases of $24.7 million, giving us total expenditures of $471.5 million, leaving us with a potential shortfall in 2017-2018 of $20.2 million, $20 million. And this does not include, this is just as the funding formula sits now, it does not include anything that might come from the current the legislative. Le legislative session that's going to be coming we'll go back as far as okay we, we're going to go far. so then you ask what are we wanting to do with our proposed uh, fund balance surplus this kind of wraps it up <laughs> I think we you know we're recommending that we save the surplus and the general fund <laughs> balance to support the 2017 2018 budget you know I think it's very important that we note that that budget is based, you know, on how our 2016 AV comes in and our enrollment growth is really dependent on that. So, uh, but then if, if there's any funds available after that, we would like to utilize the budget surplus to further support our capital projects, to reduce bond debt requirements, and, and then also to cover any unforeseen expenditures we might have out there. When do you make that assessment? Sir? When do you decide if that's, that, that surplus still exists? following year or you just keep rolling it we well we will we will with the legislative session next year it'll be late uh, it might be mid-summer before we'll, we we'll know, know by this time next year yeah by this time next year <clears throat> i think that um six percent av growth could be very realistic next year um we, we were uh, ten percent was a pleasant surprise for us this year yeah so um and and with I think housing starts are down a little bit, at least what I've heard. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you've heard that. Yes. So we're monitoring uh, growth very carefully. And then like Mr. Rice said, with the legislative session going on, anything can happen funding-wise. So this time next year, we should have a good picture of that. 1% mm -hmm. change in assessed value equals 3.3 million? Yes, sir. Uh, Yes, you did. Okay. Uh, so what's next? Uh, we need to finalize our revenue. Uh, we'll be receiving our local assessed values by July 25th last year. We received them a few days earlier, so uh, finalize that. Uh, then this budget pre presentation will have public hearings on both August 2nd and August 16th, and then we will bring the budget to the board for approval at the August 16th uh, board meeting. Quick question. Yes, um, ma'am. Have we talked with our legislators about what they're thinking is going to happen next year for public ed specifically? We've had some very uh, general um, general 
conversations about at this point. Okay. But we're in communication. Good. I just want to make sure we're watching that very carefully. I have a question. Uh, for the new personnel, 9.2 million, um, where, is, where is that at? Where are we bringing on new personnel? And I'm just curious, how many new, how many people is that? What is that equation? Right there. If you look at no. this slide. 128 people. 128 people? Yes. Yeah, it's, well, we actually have, I mean. Plus, plus 26. <laughs> here's our $8.2 million worth of growth. It, it, you know, the majority of that, 93 and a half of the positions or teachers, that is actual teachers at the campus. Um, that is where the majority of the positions are. Um, and also the special ed positions, I singled them out, but they are also teaching positions that are in there. Um, ten and a half paraprofessionals, that is all at the campus level. That That is all out at the campus level. And one of the things that all these allocations that are at a campus uh, are on a per student allocation. And that is when I was mentioning Mr. Caker and Dr. Phillips, we give them this elaborate spreadsheet <laughs> for per student allocations and they go through and they look at every single line item on every campus of every possible position they could have at a campus and they verify and make changes and adjustments. They meet with the principals. It's, it's a work of art what they do and uh, they bring that back to us. So, so that is where that's developed. Now, if you want specifics, we no, this is this is what I was looking for. Okay, we, we, we actually have the detail by campus. If you if you'd like me to send that to you, at a... no, no, this this is what I was looking for. These are at the at the campus. Um, I'll take a look and I'll look at this a little bit closer. I'm not questioning it. I'm just uh, okay. I was just curious. Are are we? In, are, I apologize. I haven't studied this as much as I need to, but are we increasing, or do we need to increase the support staff here for all these uh, new positions as well? That's below. Yeah, we have several. We, I mean, for my office alone, we added a staff accountant. We had a new entry level staff accountant. We're adding. Uh, you can see the various uh, communication right. specialists and stuff. So, for clarification, for, point, for clarification, there's 128 campus personnel. Yes, sir. To take on the 1400 growth correct plus or minus right and then uh, 26, 26 more for support administrative areas. personnel to support them yes Perfect. administrative one, and, one and form, auxiliary one yeah. former no mm -hmm. yes sir yes sir. Mm -hmm. any other questions okay okay thank you thank right you. Sorry. Sorry. item uh, 6b financial reports i'm okay. sorry did anybody have a question no, I, I cut you off i'm sorry i said thank you mr rice <laughs> Mr. Rice, bring us home on this one. Okay, now I'd like to uh, talk to the board about the financial statements for the month of June. <clears throat> uh, these financial statements include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets our liabilities and fund balances of the district. And each month we always like to look at our asset section and our cash and investments and see where those are located. We'll concentrate once again on the general fund. You can see we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $3.3 million. We have investments in our pools of $110 million. We have investments that are out there that are less than a year of $43.3 million. And we have investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $50.7 million, giving us total cash investments in the general fund of $207.5 million. And last uh, week, we got a question about our tax collections. Still a little bit behind where we were last year, but uh, we still feel confident we'll reach the 100% mark. Mm -hmm. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement for the month. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures uh, for the and fund balances for the for the for the funds. Excuse me. Uh, our revenue section includes our, our local and intermediate sources, our state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And if we look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, we can see in the general fund and debt service fund where those property taxes are coming in. We can see in food service where food sales have come in, and then self-funded. Uh, insurance, we have our premium contributions. 
We can also look at our expenditures by major object by each one of the funds. Once again, payroll is the largest expenditure in the general fund. Debt service, our debt service payments, uh, child nutrition kind of spread all over the place. And then uh, self-funded insurance contractor services pay payment of our claims. Uh, really no changes in our fund balance projections. So we're projecting a slight increase in our general fund uh, to 115 million. Now, if you remember in the budget presentation, I said it was 121. That was a total fund balance. This is just unassigned fund balance. Uh, looking at an increase in debt service, about $5.3 million. And about 341,000 increase in child nutrition. Our 2015 bond referendum status, we've currently in expended and encumbered $97.2 million. We have an estimate to complete of $395.7 million, leaving us with a projected forecast of $492.9 million. That leaves us with $27.3 million in our contingency for the total project of $520,245,424. Our self-funded insurance report. Um, June was the summer month and you know we were anticipating you know how that would how that would turn out unfortunately it was not in our favor we had total revenues of 3.4 million dollars in June we had total expenses of 4.1 million dollars for revenues under expenses right at seven hundred thousand dollars um, for the year we've had total revenues of 33.7 million uh, total expenses 34.5 million dollars for current revenues under expenses of $834,000. Um, our wellness center participation for June was only 287, but that was going through the transition uh, from H2U to the new Memorial Hermann uh, program, and we really feel that Memorial Hermann's gonna do a really good job for us. Uh, we have asked them to start looking at a Conroe site uh, to propose to us, so we're looking forward to getting that information from them. Our investments for the month, uh, our par value at the end of June was $375 million. The wham of our pulls to us is one day, and they're yielding 57 basis points. The wham of our short-term investments, other investments less than a year, is 83 days, and they're yielding 72 basis points. The wham of our investments with TCG Investment Advisors is 577 days, and they're yielding 97 basis points. And some of those short-term investments are investments in our ladder that we had gone out before that are now short-term, and so you're seeing the, that, that yield being higher there. Um, and the investments with TCG is 97 basis points. So our, combined, our WAM of our combined port portfolio is 82 days, and we're yielding 64 basis points. <clears throat> and our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, is at 26 basis points. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank, you. Nice, Thank you. Nice presentation. If not anything else, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> we stand adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a safe trip home.